Hey guys, welcome in. Welcome to Life on Mars. Happy Friday. Um, as you guys are all coming in, I want to welcome you in to 30 books in 30 weeks. Those of you who follow regularly know that this week, week five, we are reading from the book Boundaries and talking about the importance that boundaries play in our lives, our relationships, our businesses, the whole nine yards. And so as you guys come in, I encourage you to go ahead and share this video out. I much appreciate that. And it's definitely good quality subject matter for those of you who may be joining for the first time or have followed me for a while and just aren't quite sure what it is that I do. Um, let me introduce myself, Marcy Batiste. I am a public speaker and author and a recovery success trainer. Um, and I have a company called Bankable Success Advisors, which is a leading recovery solutions provider. And we specialize in helping businesses and individuals optimize their personal and professional investments so that they can optimize and maximize their return on those investments. But what I really love to do is to help women cure their emotional bankruptcy and so they can really truly discover and fully embrace what I call their star power. So I'm excited for you guys to join me. Um, this year I'm focusing on 1,000 women, taking them on their journey of healing, helping them. Uh, we're gonna build out this community of women and truly raise the bar on love, life, relationships. And so I'm excited that you guys are here. I'm excited that you're joining me tonight to talk about boundaries. We've been focusing on this book for this entire week. Um, each week on Mondays, I introduce a new book. And so we are a good way through this subject matter of boundaries. Last week we talked about codependency. And so one kind of led into the other um, as topics that kind of fit together. And so uh, we've talked about kind of what keeps people from setting boundaries and that sort of thing. Um, but the thing about it, um, that boundaries are driven uh, by our desires for the most part. I mean, basically, we all know what is good for us. We know the right thing to do, but unfortunately, for whatever reasons, we're not always motivated to do the right thing and unfortunately for most people the motivation is sparked by pain and so because I'm a recovery solutions provider one of the beliefs that I have is that recovery um, you can put things and do things proactively to either prevent damage in the first place or to allow you to recover much more quickly much more smoothly without a whole lot of residual um, pain and struggles. And so, you know, you would think that if pain is a good reason for people to make changes, that perhaps the idea of being able to avoid pain would be even more of a reason. But yeah, for some strange yeah. reason, it's not. And I think if I could discover the whys behind that, I would be a multi-billionaire because so many of us wait until there's so much pain, so much damage done, we're so broken, we're so hurt. And at that point then, do we start to realize that maybe we need to do something different. And I know for me, um, that certainly was the case. You know, I'm always gonna be transparent with you guys and tell you exactly the real, I don't try to minimize or mask any of my bad choices um, because I learned some valuable lessons from those choices along the way but I know for me in particular it was domestic violence that was the thing that gave me the extra motivation to create boundaries and then kept me motivated to uh, uphold those boundaries and to honor those boundaries regardless of who I was engaging with and what it was for me was the the idea of change became less scary than the idea of staying the same. And for me, I knew that if I stayed the same, eventually I would get into another relationship that was gonna end in more abuse and maybe possibly that next time I wouldn't be so lucky. 
Um, it just so happened that, you know, when I tell the story about my experience with domestic violence, I often share that I was one of the lucky ones because I didn't have a lot of the ongoing ties to the individual who was my abuser. Um, I didn't have children, we didn't live together, etc. And so, um, and I got out. So that in and of itself made me one of the lucky ones because so many people don't. And so that's why I'm passionate about working with women. That's why I'm so passionate about teaching domestic violence education. That's why I go into companies and train about workplace violence and domestic violence. Um, and that's why I work with women to cure emotional bankruptcy because at the end of the day, it's that brokenness, it's that emptiness. If we can do things and put things proactively in place to, to allow us to feel health, healthy and whole on our own, aside and apart from a relationship, then we're less likely to succumb to the abuses of being in and staying in an abusive relationship. And granted, there's a whole lot of stuff that goes into that. So um, we're not really here to talk about domestic violence tonight, but I share that with you simply to say, you know, for me, I was one of those ones where um, I wasn't motivated to do the right thing. Um, that wasn't enough for me. It was pain that created my motivation. And it was an extreme circumstance that created that motivation because up until the physical abuse, I had been in multiple emotionally abusive relationships, multiple verbally abusive relationships, and never was that enough to drive me to create sustainable change. And so that sustainable change for me came in the way of boundaries. And so when I share excuse me, when I share these personal development books with you guys, um, much of what I'm sharing comes from my own personal development library. Much of it comes from my own healing experiences and books that I know for a fact that the principles that are contained within their pages help. Boundaries help. Boundaries change my life. And learning to not only set them for what's right for me and what's good for me, but learning to defend them because what I will tell you beyond a shadow of a doubt that with change comes resistance and with resistance comes reluctance. And so the more people push back, the more we tend to retreat and say, you know what, maybe, you know, maybe that's too extreme. Maybe I don't need a boundary that's that strong. Um, Maybe I'm, I'm being dramatic. Maybe I'm blowing it out of proportion. So we tend to retreat based on the amount of resistance. And one of the things that boundaries taught me was that the word no is a complete sentence. It doesn't require apologies. It doesn't require explanations. Nothing further needs to follow. Do you want to do X, Y, Z? No, period. And it got to a point as I was learning to utilize my no's to the wrong things so that I could say yes to the right things. As I was learning to do that, um, I would say no for no reason sometimes. Like, it would be something that maybe I didn't care one way or the other about, but I would say no just to practice. Practice my no. And I got really, really good at no. And I'm still really, really good at no. Um, but that's one of the things that you have to realize is that as you begin to make the changes, the people around you, you're going to see resistance. You're going to experience resistance from what you're probably least prepared for is the resistance that you're going to feel in here because you've conditioned yourself to live a certain way to behave a certain way and to be in relation with people a certain way. And like I said, we talked last week about codependency. That is a certain lifestyle, it's a certain thought process. And so recreating these boundaries and setting these boundaries, getting ready to practice your nose, getting ready to stand behind your nose, all requires you to kind of overcome what you feel inside. You have to retrain yourself even before you start retraining everyone else. 
And so that's why you start practicing the nose. Like I always say with a lot of these strategies, practice when it doesn't really matter. Um, you know, do you want to, do you want to run to the store with me? No, like you don't have anything to lose. You're not really doing anything else. But if someone would ask that I want to do something, something little major, minor thing, nothing major. No. And they'd kind of look and they would pause and they would wait for an explanation. And then they would realize they're not going to get one. It doesn't work that way. Not to say that I don't ever provide explanations when I opt out of things, but for the most part, I really don't. Um, and one of the things that people who are close to me, hey, Anthony, um, hey, Gwen, people that are close to me understand that, um, and I share a lot of times on my videos and on my page that I'm sold out to my happiness. <clears throat> so if, if I give an explanation at all, um, it may sound something like no, and when they're like, well, why not? It's impede, it might impede my happiness, or it's going to impede my happiness. And that is the extent of my explanation, if I give that at all. But a lot of times it's just like, I don't know, I just don't feel like it. I don't want to. Like, I don't have to have a reason to not do something for someone else, not do something with someone else. Not even, I don't even have to have a reason to not do something for myself. So... Oh, thank you, Anthony. Thank you, Dr. Mercy. You're funny. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start using that and see if they can, uh, if I can collect the doctor's salary too. <laughs> but, um, so yeah, you guys, um, really on the boundary thing, really getting comfortable and realizing that, like I said, with change is going to come resistance and with resistance comes reluctance and your reluctance is going to come oftentimes from within you and you have to practice and work on you. You have to reteach yourself how to be in relationship with yourself. And that's one of the very, very first boundaries is to be able to put yourself in a place of priority, put your needs in a place of priority. And um, that's one of the things oftentimes that my clients and I work uh, weeks on, weeks, multiple weeks on, because I know for a fact that as they begin to change as they begin to grow um, they're going to see resistance they're going to see resistance from family from friends from co-workers from peers from church members from all over the board the gamut is wide open um, but the most resistance they're going to experience is from themselves because they've got to retrain themselves in new habits so that was my message for tonight happy friday it's super bowl weekend um, and I am Team Eagles for this weekend because I'm so anti-Patriots. I can't even hardly stand it. But anyway, that's off topic. I hope you guys have an amazing night. We'll be back tomorrow night talking again about boundaries and reading from this little gem right here, Boundaries. And so also, actually, this book also has a workbook with it that is incredibly helpful. And um, so I'll share some stuff from the workbook probably on Saturday and Sunday, and then on Monday we'll move into the next subject matter. So as always, you guys, I appreciate you joining me. I thank you for tuning in. Um, and oh, and if you've missed any of the videos, they're all available on my YouTube channel, and the link is in the title of this email. Right, Anthony, but DB for life. Go Broncos. <laughs> all right, you guys, I'm out. Take care. Thanks for living life on Mars. We'll talk soon.